total artificial heart. Cannulation for bypass. Cardiectomy. Initial incision across the right ventricular outflow tract and parallel to the tricuspid valve annulus, leaving three to five millimeters of muscle rim. Cutting the tricuspid valve. Excising the apex. left ventricular excision. Cutting the mitral valve. Transecting the pulmonary artery. Transecting the aorta. Removing the pulmonary artery trunk. Transecting the interventricular septum. Opening the left ventricular outflow tract. Trimming of atrioventricular valve leaflets to three millimeters. Trimming the cuffs to three millimeters. Inverting the cuffs. Suturing the cuffs in place. Inverting the cuffs to their original position. Pressure testing the suture lines with residual leak shown as a blue jet. Repair stitch. Suturing outflow grafts to the great arteries. First, the pulmonary artery graft is sewn into place. It is typically six centimeters in length. The pulmonary outflow graft needs to be longer than the aortic graft. The aortic graft is typically 3 centimeters in length. A snare or clamp is placed on the pulmonary artery and then pressure testing the suture lines. Building the neopericardium with Gore-Tex pericardial patches on the left lateral side down to the pulmonary veins and then along the diaphragm.
The left-sided device is first attached to the cuff with the assistance of needle drivers at 10 and 2 o'clock. Then, the aortic outflow graft is positioned over the outflow cap. The right-sided device is attached in the same order. Vessels are marked for reoperation, including the inferior vena cava, the superior vena cava, the aorta, and the pulmonary artery with a loose fitting cylastic loop. The neopericardium is completed. Drive lines pass through the abdominal wall pre-bypass to the left of the midline and at least 2.5 centimeters below the costal margin. <laughs>